in this video we'll solve a guesstimate the problem is one of my preferred ones and it's basically estimating the number of trains that are there in the delhi metro network now uh, before we start solving this case what we'll do is we'll discuss like i've already covered in my guesstimate video the three main points that you need to consider overall before you jump into the case so the first would be about clarification the second would be about having one or more strategies in mind and the third is actually is actually the case solving the discussion part of it okay so we need to cover them one after the other and we need to make sure that we spend sufficient time trying to analyze all aspects of these three issues so in this case uh, estimating the number of trains in the delhi metro network first we'll try to think of some clarifications okay now uh, i would request you to pause the video for a second and try to come up with a few clarification questions all right uh, i hope you have a list i'll share a couple of questions that i think are quite relevant to any strategy that you can adopt okay uh, the first question would be to understand whether are we considering only the functional trains or are we also considering the trains that are there in the yard so any kind of transportation infrastructure would always have some kind of capacity which is there for emergencies so we want to make sure that we are able to scope out our problem perfectly so in this case let us say that we are only considering the trains which are running at any point of time all right that would be covered the second would be assuming that okay it's an ordinary day so there is no reason for any kind of shortfall or an increase in the number of trains that are there on the network as far as possible in all your case problems you would want this kind of a uniformity to exist it will make your calculation simpler if it is not forthcoming you would want to put forward this idea that can i assume it to be an average day a normal day so that the special cases don't have to be considered if the interviewer does not agree with this assumption and asks you to consider the special cases also well then you will have to do that okay in this case let us assume that it's a, a uniform day with average operation so let us assume that all 365 days are the same for the purpose of this case okay so now how do we go about doing it so the clarifications the two main clarification questions are done now we'll try to discuss what the different strategies are okay so i would discuss this case along two strategies okay the first i would say is slightly more difficult because it involves a guesstimate in itself the second one is more experience based and uh, i find it more convenient to use okay so uh let's discuss the first strategy now so we are now to the third point of discussion we've thought of our two strategies we find that one of them would actually be more convenient but for the purpose of this video we are covering both these strategies so the first one is actually quite straightforward what we are doing as you can see here is that we try to find out what the total metro usage in a day is we'll get to the numbers in a little while but let's see the steps so we are first trying to understand the total metro usage now if you remember what we discussed in the bottleneck approach to guesstimate video we find that it's always useful to solve a problem for the peak hour because at that point of time you know that the supply is at its peak so you only have to consider one of the factors the other factor is completely fixed okay so in this case let us assume that we are looking for a particular peak hour in which the maximum number of trains that could be running at any point of time in the network are already on the network so let us say that's morning 8 am to 9 am which is the peak hour of the delhi metro okay now let us say that we know the total number of metro users in a day only a fraction of that would be traveling in the peak hour right what this number would be we'll get in a while now out of these people not everyone would be making the journey for the whole hour so we would also want to know the average trip time of each person let us say after doing all of that we find that the total number is x okay now these would be the number of people so if i was to take i would was in between 8 to 9 pm if, I, if between 8 am to 9 am 
if I was to stop the operations of the Delhi Metro and bring everything to a standstill, I would find exactly X number of people on the tracks. Okay, so that is the significance of X. Now, if I know what the number of people in each bogey are, and I assume that there are total of six bogies per train, so I would know the number of people that each train can accommodate. Now my calculation as can be seen in the formula is quite simple. My total number of trains are basically X upon the capacity of one train, which is capacity of one bogey into average bogies per train. All right. Uh, I hope it is straightforward. If not, what we'll do is we'll now look at the numbers to for all of these. And I think it will make a lot more sense. Okay. So we said the first point to consider would be the total metro users per day. Let us say that uh, we know this number and that number is 3 million. Okay. You could solve a guesstimate for this altogether. Okay. But in this case, let us say that we have gotten the number from the interviewer. Okay. That's 3 million or 30 lakh. Now, we have to figure out what fraction of this would be traveling between the 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. window that we have considered. Okay. So, I would say the simplest way of getting to this number would be, so let us assume that the metro travels for, uh, the operates for a total of 15 hours in a day, okay, or 16 hours in a day. That would make, if the unit uh, uniformity existed in terms of the passenger usage, we would find that about six, six and a half percent people travel in each hour, okay. But we find that that is not the case. The metro train frequency varies from two minutes to six minutes or even more, right? So there's definitely a concept of peak hour, non-peak hour, right? So if everything was uniform, we would have six, six and a half percent per hour. What I have assumed here is that, okay, so in a peak hour, let me just double that, okay? So let me just assume it to be 15%. 15% of the total metro usage would happen in peak hour. Now, whether this number is 10, 12, 15, 20, doesn't matter, right? The idea is to have some strategy to come closer to this number and then discuss with the interviewer whether the interviewer is happy with your assumption or not. So let us say that we take it to be 15%. All right. Now, the next point that we have to consider is the average travel time. Okay, so 15% of 3 million are the total number of people who would be traveling between 8 to 9 a.m. But not everyone would be traveling for the duration of this whole one hour, right? So we have to consider that only a, a fraction of this one hour would be the average travel time for every person. So from experience, you can say uh, 40 minutes, okay? So let us assume it to be 40 minutes for the office hour period, okay? Now, our uh, X becomes quite simple it's basically 3 million which i have represented here as 3 into 10 to the power 6 into 15 percent that is 0.15 into 2 by 3 which is 40 minutes is 2 by third fraction of an hour so into 2 by 3 so at any point of time i have 3 into 10 to the power 5 people in the metro between that period okay now the next point here is to figure out the capacity of one bogey. Okay. So if you are aware of the layout of the Delhi Metro, if you are not, you can actually ask the interviewer this question directly. Okay. So there are about 50 people who can sit in one bogey. Okay. Now the capacity definitely is going to be many folds greater than that. Right. Because for every person who is sitting, there are many people who are standing. Right. And especially in the P car, it's jam packed. So let us assume that for every person who is sitting, there are four people who are standing. Okay. So for 50 people who are sitting, there are 200 people who are standing. So the capacity of each bogey becomes 250 people. Assuming that one train has six bogies, the capacity of one train becomes 1500 or basically 1.5 into 10 to the power 3. As I'll cover, so what's the logic of these power notations? As we'll cover in another video about how to do calculations in a more structured and easier fashion, I always try to represent my answer in the power notation because that way I don't make a zero error. So now the value of X is three into 10 to the power five and the denominator is 1.5 into 10 to the power three. So the total number of trains that I have become 200, right? Now, 
that seems to be a reasonable number okay now we look at the second strategy and see whether our numbers kind of match or not okay so the second strategy is kind of similar to the uh, strategy that we discussed for estimating the area of delhi what we'll do is we'll take any one metro line okay we'll try to figure out the total travel time on that line we now assume that during the peak hour suddenly i'm stopping all the operations okay so we'll find how far apart in terms of time two trains are on that track okay another way to imagine it is let's say you're standing on a particular station on that line how frequently during the peak hour do you see a train coming so in the peak hour usually it's two minutes or three minutes right now the train on one side of the track simply becomes the total time taken to travel from one end to the other end upon the time difference between two trains that is observed right so this is what i have represented in the formula here now let us take the case of the yellow line okay so now while we are doing this we are just calculating distance from let's just say jahangir puri to huda city center but at the same time is a parallel track which is coming from that direction also so the total number of trains corresponding to the yellow line will be twice of what we get from this formula okay that's straightforward now all we do is we simply assume that okay the traffic is uniformly distributed across all lines so if the length of this line was a particular number we just use unitary method to expand it for all the lines another way could be that okay you can say okay that we have six lines or five lines we can simply multiply this number by 5 or 6 okay now let's look at the numbers for this particular case okay so the total travel time for the yellow line on any direction is basically 90 minutes uh for the peak hour i have assumed that the time headway or the amount of time between two trains is roughly 3 minutes so that means train on one side of the track are 90 by 3 that is only 30 and corresponding to both the sides would be 13 to 260 now uh the total number of trains that i have are basically 60 trains corresponding to the yellow line extrapolated to the whole metro network now the yellow line is actually one of one of the longest lines on the delhi metro network so even though i know that there are six lines on the delhi metro i instead of multiplying this number by 6 on a conservative estimate i have just multiplied it by 5 it's a total number of 300 trains okay i could have multiplied it by 6 also and gotten 360 as my answer nothing really would change about that i want to make a more a uh, reasonable estimate by using my previous knowledge of the length of the respective lengths of different tra- uh, different uh, net- uh, network uh, metro lines uh, different uh, color metro lines okay now if we find in our first case we found the answer to be 200 and the second the answer is 300 or 360 right so the order of magnitude of both these answer seem to be similar right so we know that the answer would somehow lie will uh, somewhere lie in this range only okay so i think that exact number is somewhere around 220 or so okay uh, again like in most estimates the number don't matter as much as the overall strategy assuming that your number is in the ballpark of the correct answer so there we have it we have discussed two different strategies that we can use to solve this particular guesstimate and any other guesstimate of similar type i hope you find this useful for your case solving and uh, keep looking forward to this channel for more videos in the coming days